Hi guys, welcome back, and this is Amel. And well, today I'm very excited because I'm gonna teach you a very important, a very important concept in MIPS assembly language, and that is the concept of conditionals. But uh, remember, I already told you how to actually do conditions with integers. But when it comes to floating point numbers, like let's say uh, floats and doubles. Uh, it's a different story. You have different commands. And remember, when we're working with floats and doubles, uh, we don't use these registers right here. We don't use the, the the regular registers. We use the actually the special registers in code processor one. Oh, this right here. So um, I'm very excited. Let's go to file new, and I have a new file. I want to save it. So click on save. Give it a name. It's gonna be conditions so save it and now as usual we have two uh, sections of our program that data contains all the variables in random access memory and that text for all the instructions and because I want to follow good practices I'm gonna make a label called main for my main program and I'm gonna make um, a system call uh, system call to end the program so this is gonna be the end of the program or when the program is going to terminate uh, it's like return 0 in C++ or C I mean the old versions so you, you do load immediate v0 comma 10 and syscall so this is requesting um, a service from the operating system this is telling the operating system to to terminate the program when it reaches when the program reaches this command right here it's like asking uh, the operating system to end the program so now that I have the basic um, structure of the program I want to have some values in random access memory so remember all the all the variables, all the values in random access in random access memory, you have to declare them in that in the data section. So let's begin. And first, I want to have a message. So I'm going to give it a name, message. Then colon. The data type is going to be text. So that ASCII Z. And it's going to be it was true and backslash n for a new line so I want this message because uh, I want to test if let's say two floating no two floating point numbers maybe two floats are equal or maybe two doubles are equal so if they are equal then this is gonna say it was true so that's why I want this message in random access memory I want a second message so message 2 the data type is going to be the same because it's text. So that ASCII Z and it's going to be it was false. So if the condition was false, I'm going to print this out to the screen. And I also want two numbers and they're going to be floats. Uh, they're going to be they're going to have a decimal point. So number one and the data type is going to be float. And the value, let's say it's going to be 10.4. I want one more number, let's say number 2. The data type is going to be float. And the value is going to be, let's say, uh, 4.6. So now I have two messages in random access memory. And I have two floats in random access memory. And I have the main... Uh, the main label, the main function, you can call it the main function right here. So the first thing I want to do is that I want to move these two numbers um, from random access memory to registers. I want to move them to the processor because that's the only way I will be able to perform comparison operations. Uh, that's the only way I have to move them to registers. So remember, if you're working with floats, um, you use this command to to move them from RAM to registers. Load word, load word, coprocessor one, and this is like 
take take the value from random access memory from random access memory and put it in this register. So now you specify uh, what register you want. So I want it in dollar sign F0 and it's gonna be number one. So now 10.4, which is number one right here, is gonna be uh, stored in this register F0. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the for the second number, load word into coprocessor one, and I want it in register dollar sign F2, number two. So this is gonna take the value in the address number two, which is 4.6, and it's gonna store that value in this register inside the processor, um, register F2. And pay attention to this. I'm using uh, F0, F2 um, for a special reason. And the reason is that sometimes uh, you want to change your program to instead of uh, floats or single point single point precision numbers, you want to use doubles. So remember that doubles take two registers and they have to be even numbers. So that's why I'm choosing these numbers right here, just in case I want to change it later. But don't worry about that. So we have this right here. Now number 10.4 is in F0 and number 4.6 is in F2. So what I want to do now is that I want to show you the first instruction and this is going to be very important so pay attention C dot and when you press that you see these options right here so C dot EQ dot D C dot EQ dot S C dot L E dot D um, so all these ins the, all these options they are they are instructions and these are the instructions to perform comparisons or conditionals uh, with uh, floats and doubles so, as I told you before, I want to check if these two numbers, these two floats are equal. So, I'm going to choose the first instruction, C that EQ that, that actually the second, C that EQ that S, because S is for floats and D is for doubles. So, this is going to compare if these two numbers are equal. So, you can see, C that EQ that S, compare if these two floats are equal. So, the first one I want to compare is F0 compare it with F2 and this is all we need this is gonna do the comparison but then how do we know that it was true or false well in this case we have to use another instruction and the instruction is branch if coprocessor 1 is true but we can also use branch if coprocessor 1 is false so Let's say that these two numbers are equal. If they're equal, um, coprocessor one is gonna be is gonna be true. But if they are not equal, coprocessor one is gonna be false. So branch. So where do I wanna go? Where do I want to branch? So if they are true, I wanna jump. I wanna go to a different place. So I'm gonna go to a place called exit. And exit exit is just a label that I'm gonna build right now. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a label, exit. Whenever you're making a label, you just give it a name and then you use colon. And this label right here, um, the code that, that I'm going to have here is just to, to show the second message. Uh, I mean the, the first message. It was true. So I'm going to say load immediate, the last time is 0, 4. And this is the command to, to bring a value to the screen. Uh, requesting from the operating system and then the value that I want to print is the message so load the address of the message into dollar sign is zero message so you can see load the address of the message into dollar sign is zero which is the argument and then I have to tell the system to execute this to do it this is a, a request from the operating system so um, if it is true that this value is equal to this value right here, it's gonna jump to exit. So um, in case that it is false, I wanna bring another message. So it's gonna it's gonna be the following. Um, it's gonna be load immediate the sign v0 comma four, load address the sign is zero, and the message is gonna be it was false. So it's gonna be message two. And finally, I'm gonna do syscall. 
So before I execute the program, I'm going to explain it to you one more time. Um, so you will have a better idea how it works. So I have these values in random access memory, all of the two messages and two numbers. I have the main function right here. So this is like in C++ return zero, or it means just terminate the program, end the program. And um, what I'm doing here is that I'm moving the value, the float, from random access memory to memory to this register, and the same here. And then I am comparing the two numbers to make sure that they're equal. If they are equal, then code processor one is going to be set to true. And if then I'm going to check if branch if code processor one is true. So where branch to exit or go to exit. So this is going to be this right here is going to be all this right here is going to be ignored and it's going to come down here to the exit. But if this was false, then if this was fal false, then it will it would not come here. It would just it would just go here. It would just it would just print the second message and then it, it would terminate. So now let's execute. Now you know that they're not equal, so it should it should just uh, continue and show the second message. So save, run, assemble, and execute. And as you can see, it was false. You see that it it, it is false that 10.4 is equal to 4.6. But now let's make it let's make it equal right now it's gonna be true so let's save it let me clear this wrong assemble and execute now you see it says it was true so you can see that the program is working so remember uh, when we are comparing two floats or two doubles we use this special instruction called C and C stands for compare. So compare if these two registers are equal. Compare if these two floats are equal. So if it is true that they're equal, like in this case, then coprocessor one is gonna be set to true. And if coprocessor one is set to true, then right here, branch if it is true, then it's gonna branch to the label that you specify. And the label in this case is exit. So this is gonna be ignored and it's gonna execute the body of the exit, uh, which is just which is gonna print the the message. It was false. I mean, it was true. It was true. So, um, you know, um, as you you have C dot equal, but you also have C dot le, uh, just to compare if they are less than or equal to. Um, and remember, if you if you're working with doubles. Then you use that D. If you use if you're working with floats, you use that S. And you also have uh, a less than less than less than or equal to and equal to. So thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I will continue posting more videos, and don't forget to go to smartbanya.com. So thank you very much, and see you next time. Okay.